living by heart the Sufi way. Sufi wisdom offers several traditional cures for an ailing heart. Everyone has an ailing heart. Ailing heart means when emotions are not properly understood. They are sometimes on a rampage and they get putrefied in the process of interaction in the world of objects and beings. One of these is contemplating the meaning of the revealed holy books and introspection on the words of the saints, sheikhs and masters. Since these perform an action upon the heart, removing its illusions, healing all ills, restoring its strength. However, it is not easy to contemplate and understand the meaning of the Masters or the Holy Scriptures. For the time being, let us continue the Sufi wisdom of living by heart. Another cure for heart is keeping one's stomach empty. Holy Prophet said that an excess of food hardens the heart. Fasting is the opposite of the addictions, subtle and not so subtle, with which he can numb us to the heart's pain. When through fasting we expose the heart's pain to ourselves, we become more emotionally vulnerable and honest. Only then can heart be healed. It is always suggested eat 10% less than what you would have normally liked to consume. Keeping a night vigil until dawn is a practice that is unfamiliar outside of Islamic culture except for the specific traditions. But it has been a mainstay of the Sufis. It has been said that in the early hours before the dawn, the angels draw near to earth. That is why the significance of getting up in the morning before dawn is considered very auspicious. Hindus call this as Brahma Muhurt, means the hour before God's awake. And it is very important. It has been said that in the early hours before the dawn, the angels draw near to the earth and our prayers can better be answered. Another explanation is that in these early morning hours, the activities of the world has been reduced to its minimum. The psychic atmosphere has become still and we are more able to reach the depths of concentration upon our unconscious beings. That is why getting up early in the morning is considered auspicious in all the traditions. There are certain meditations which are done in the morning. You take a nap, wake up in the middle of the night or afterwards and then continue your meditation. This is a way of the prayers that is recommended by Sufis and in Islamic tradition. Finally, keeping the company of those who are conscious of their innerness or Allah can restore faith and health to the heart. The best among you are those who when seen or when you are in their company that reminds you of your innerness, that reminds you of your divinity, that reminds you of Allah. It is only a matter of degree to move from the ailing heart to the purified heart. This eventual purification can be understood to proceed through four primary activities or stages. Liberating ourselves from the psychological distortions and complexes that prevent us from forming a healthy 
an integrated individuality. Second, freeing ourselves from the slavery to the attraction of the world, all of which are secondary reflection of the qualities within our hearts. Through seeing these attractions as wheels over our one essential yearning, the veil falls away and the naked reality remains visible to us. Number three, transcending the subtlest veil which is the self and its selfishness. Lastly, devoting oneself and one's attention to Allah, living in and living through Allah, reality and love. The best way is to live by your consciousness, not by the dictates of the society, traditions and things like these. The first three of these are virtually impossible without the fourth. Without the as understanding the essence of love, we can only love our egos and the world. Without the center, we suffer fragmentation, dispersion in multiplicity. We must discover our center. It is at the center that love, the spring of love, is discovered. By living in and through the center, we become still and at peace with ourselves and with the outer world. Then all the things of the world will run after us. But if while sitting we are engaged with the attractions of the world, we are not sitting but running after the world while we are in the sitting position. Holy Prophet said, make all your cares into a single care and Allah will attend to all your cares. The real friend of Allah are not occupied with power, self-importance or acquisition because they are with Allah the Bountiful. Moses said, O oh Lord, are you close enough for me? to whisper in your ears or so distant that I should shout. And it is said that he heard the voice, I am behind you, before you, at your right and at your left. O Moses, I am sitting next to my servant wherever he remembers me and I am with him when he calls me. Once a fish want to know where is the ocean, just as we want to know where is God. Then a wise Sufi said, you are the ocean, you live in ocean, you drink ocean, you breathe ocean, you eat ocean, ocean is you and you are ocean. It is the essence of your being. Hazrat Ali ibn Abu Talib was once asked, if he had ever seen Allah, how could I worship what I have not seen? Hazrat Ali replied, Our eyes cannot see Allah directly, but the heart can see Allah through the realities of faith. God is embedded in his creation. If it is to be said, creation is visible God and God is invisible creation. If you cannot see God in its creation, then you cannot envision God. Sri Aurobindo says that it is very easy to say for a man, for the ignorant one, that I love God. It is better to say that I love a next person. And Jesus emphatically said, love thy neighbors, because this is the most difficult aspect. Most difficult aspect, how can you love your neighbor? You have to seek that aspect of divinity in the neighbor, in your enemy, the moment you are able to see that and love him or her, you have understood the essence of love or faith. Those who turn towards their own heart may enter the world of spiritual qualities and they may find there the source of 
every quality that they projected onto the outer world and all that they are looking for may truly be within themselves. Art includes a spectrum of subconscious faculties for knowing reality immediately and qualitatively. In other words, heart is intuitive. The heart, however, is obscure and veiled from its intuitive knowing by most of our habitual thoughts and emotions, particularly in so far as these are derived from the false self or ego. Life presents us with so many ambiguous situations. How can then we know whether we are following the concealed desire of ego or the guidance of the heart. We cannot afford to sentimentalize the heart because it is not only tender but fierce as well. Heart is both absolute freedom and bondage at the same time. It is very tender at times and at times it becomes a fierce lion. Reason, which is the wise and skillful, uses the conscious mind, can be used to clear the mirror of the heart from the distortions of compulsion, defensiveness and illusion. To some extent, this is the work of a true psychotherapy, a process which is a healing of the soul. While the effects of the past wounds can be mitigated by bringing contents into consciousness and psychotherapy. However, only an authentic spirituality can awaken the healing forces of humbleness, gratitude and love. To some who were suffering from this ailment of heart, I had to suggest to go into the past relations, really those and in the process you will be able to not only purify that but you will be able to purify the space that is known as the heart and once that space is purified sanctified the pure and innocence of love manifests for these qualities to be authentic and spontaneous and not merely the outcome of moral obligation, it is necessary to live from the heart. And when you begin to live by heart, the symptoms of humbleness, gratitude and love become so apparent that all around you begins to feel that the spring gushing out of you. You are loving, grateful, authentic, humble, not only to those who do favors to you, but to those whom you do not know even, or you have met them for the first time. The complete healing of soul is possible only through soul's contact with the whole through the heart. On the dumb bosom of this oblivious glow, Although as unknown beings we seem to meet, we are not aliens nor as strangers join. We are bound to each other by a causeless force. There is a power within that knows beyond our knowings. Many of you we have not met in person, yet still there is no lack of the flow of love overflowing from a sanctified heart. There are people whom I have not met, who are in far away distant land, in different time zones, yet still they are very close to my heart, as if two bodies and one heart pulsate together in harmony. Purity of heart refers to the overall soundness and health of the heart. The heart, if it is truly heart, is in contact with the spirit, but to achieve this rapport with the spirit, it must be made receptive 
all the way down to the subconscious level. Only then can it reliably respond to the spiritual qualities embedded within and then manifest these both within and without. Sometimes you may find it difficult but in the company of the one who is an embodiment of these it becomes very easy. That is why on one's own it is difficult to decipher the messages that are contained in the holy scriptures because they are written there is no intonation there is no voice modulation there is no aliveness in that it is you your innerness can infuse the life force into it living from the heart is responding to the inner guidance of love and wisdom in the heart this may appear to be irrational and even be against one's own apparent self-interest. That is its beauty and power. It does not depend on emotions. It submits faithfully, spontaneously and joyfully to the requirements of the moment. What is needed in this moment, you are responding to that rather than guided by traditions, the set norms and values. It knows no fear and always submits to the home, ready to respond faithfully, spontaneously, joyfully, full of awareness to the requirements of the present moment. This is living in the moment. Subhan Allah